Hello there, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello, you guys. Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to read the title of this. Uh, we're just going to go with it. Yes. So what you're looking at is a massive crater discovered in northern Yamal Peninsula. And this happened in July. This is in Russia, in Siberia. Let me, yeah, Cindy doesn't know what caused this. What do you think caused it? I, I feel like it's an earth change something. Yeah, scientists think it was methane. It uh. was it, it from the frozen tundra becoming unfrozen. Can you imagine that? Now, you know, methane is going to affect the atmosphere much more than carbon emissions. Much, 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 much more. And all the areas around the globe, especially up in, in this area, Siberia and over in Alaska, warming up in certain spots and certain spots is getting colder so and we're going to check that out but what's happening is the globe is changing rapidly this thing is massive you see these these are people yeah these are people not ants no this this is a 50 meter 150 ish foot deep crater and so that is what they think happened with it is they're thinking it was a methane blast Wow. Talking about big blasts, we have Giantess Geyser and Yellowstone erupting for the first time in six years. So this has been asleep for over six years, and this recently erupted on the 25th. And, of course, all eyes are always taking at least a peek at Yellowstone for all of us that know the potential that lies there. Uh, today... As a side note, we have multiple services, including Twitter, impacted by international network failure. So real-time metrics show reduced level 3 Centrelink uh, connectivity between the U.S. and Europe from 10 a.m. UTC, impacting other regions. Lots and uh, lots of major providers were down, including Hulu, PlayStation, Amazon, um, Xbox Live, Discord, Feedly. There's quite a few. You know, there there was a lot of people buzzing that they were wondering if it was any sort of act of hacking or sabotage. And uh, some were even wondering if it was perhaps the Russians or the Chinese cutting under under uh, sea cables. Mm -hmm. So oh, if we look at it, the, the official explanation is that they're uh, basically uh, blaming CenturyLink for this. But, you know, I don't know. There's so many different things. There's so many different things happening right now. We, as we're going to take a look too, we had a, a geomagnetic storm. It was the only, only the second geomagnetic storm of 2020 that just hit on the 28th. We've been talking about, you know, getting ready for the grid to go down for quite a while. And, you know, it could be uh, thanks to the sun and incoming energies, or it could be, uh, something else, you know, espionage and other, mm, what should we say, you know, the war that's building, you know, could be related to that uh, because, you know, it's obvious what's going on right now around the world as far as the situation geopolitically. And we've talked about sleeper cells, the potential for things like that as well. Um, 6.5. This is one of the biggest ones I can remember on the central mid-Atlantic ridge. That's pretty big. Uh, 10 kilometer depth is what they're giving, which is like a standard shallow depth. Uh, n no tsunami, but pretty, pretty significant. This is pretty big. It had the energy of five atomic bombs, a 6.5 right here. And while we're looking... Uh, this was a decent size one we see over here in Arkansas, 3.6, very close to the New Madrid zone. And, you know, uh, still every single day, you got four quakes over there in North Carolina um, by Sparta. So ever since we had that one quake, it's been pretty active. And then we got the usual swarms going on, the typical swarms that we see that have always been there at Ridgecrest. And ever since we had the big one up in Nevada, a swarm there too. Quite a bit of activity down here between LA and San Diego just to the east. So, you know, obviously San Andreas and obviously in Cascadia, we're watching those very closely. Uh, coincidentally, you see all the activity down here 
quiet as can be up here. So when you see that type of quietness again, you know, you kind of watch it. Otherwise, pretty typical activity elsewhere. And that was a 5-1 on the South Shetland Islands. So look at this. This is showing before and after Laura. And this is just east of Cameron, Louisiana. What a mess. What a mess. And so with Hurricane Laura, oh, these are, these are annoying pop-ups. <laughs> Look at them. You, you can't get rid of them. Like they just keep coming. It's whack-a-mole. <laughs> it is, isn't it? The Watchers just gets worse and worse and strange sounds, too, with more and more and more ads. Um, Hurricane Laura aftermath, at least 54 people dead. Widespread destruction across the Caribbean and the U.S. Gulf Coast. And there is um, some possibility of some systems in the Atlantic developing. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. And while I'm thinking about it, I'll just pull up real quick and see what they're saying here. So this is Invest 99L. And we see the location uh, of this off the Venezuelan coast. So, you know, it's really rare that you actually get any sort of hurricane to hit Panama or Costa Rica. And uh, that was one of the reasons why I always kind of thought those would be great little spots to be. But we're going to have to watch this and see how it develops. And it, right now, I think they were saying it has about a 60% chance of development. Wow. That's kind of suggestive there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we have a wildfire raging near the ruins of a Bronze Age site in My Mycenae in Greece. So this is right by the tomb of Agamemnon, which was a king in the famous Trojan War. And yeah, wildfires are still something we have to watch out for too. 270% increase in illegal campfires in the San Bernardino National Forest. And, you know, we know some of these fires, they say, were by lightning strikes. If people are suspicious. Some of them might be due to uh, volcanic activity, perhaps. And who knows what else uh, as well. So that's interesting that there's a 270% increase in illegal campfires. But if you look at it, what people are doing more in these times is getting away. And so... As far as vacations, a lot more people are camping right now than before. And we know that for sure. I mean, we, there was no place in Flagstaff and over in Sedona at all last time we were through there uh, available. It was just packed. And here we're looking at total Arctic sea ice volume. And the black line is the current year. It seems like it's going to end up passing a few of these. I'm, I'm thinking the way it's starting to swing. Uh, but for the really for the last year solid, it's been at the lowest levels going back to 2004. However, Antarctic sea ice extent is currently exceeding the 1981-2010 average, and it's growing. So yeah, big changes going on. That's that's the bottom line. And Professor Valentina Zarkova says that we entered the modern grand solar minimum on. June 8th, 2020. So that's the new paper that just came from uh, Professor Zarkova. And of course, there's many people that just hinge on every word that she puts out. So the opening paragraph reads, in this editorial, I will demonstrate with newly discovered solar activity, proxy magnetic field that the sun has entered into the modern grand solar minimum. 2020 to 2053 that will lead to a significant reduction of solar magnetic field and activity like during the Maunder minimum leading to noticeable reduction of terrestrial temperature. So, you know, if, if you've been in, in the American West, it has been toasty, but at some point things will change. They should change. But then again, you know, everything is so upside down. In so many ways, I want to thank everybody for your support on Patreon and also on Ko-Fi. We couldn't do it without you. As always, guys, be safe out there. Be prepared. God bless and namaste. Namaste.